best I can. <laughs> and I praise God for, for you. I also want you to know, just in these few seconds, praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to an, another exciting word. An exciting word. I believe I have a word that will bless you. We're going to talk today about faith that sustains. And I believe that's what we need. Uh, I, but I just want you to know that we as believers, as children of God, we are a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the triumphant church. We can open our mouth and speak a word, a ream of word, and bring victory to our situation, change our circumstances. We're not the victim, we're the victor. And I want you to know that. Uh, and we are keenly aware that trouble uh, presses in. The wisdom uh, uh, of the world is insufficient uh, in the fact, of, in the face of a crisis. But, but uh, we have something to be grateful for. And I just want to share in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14, it said, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphant, to be triumph, to, to lead us in triumph in Christ. And through us diffuses the fragrance, the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. That, mean we're, that means we're not dumbfounded we're not confused when we face trials because we know where to, to go. We know who to look to. And he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So we're sound. We're stable. Yes, we're unshakable. Someone said, and I shared a, a, a week or so ago, untouchable. <laughs> oh, yes. When you know who you are and where you are, who's leading you and guiding you. Uh, we've come to a place in history where it is just possible that we are the last day proclaimers that, uh, uh, that Jesus is the healer of the sick and the deliverer of humanity. And he's coming again. I say he's coming again. We're looking for him. He's coming again. We have been called to tell everyone. Tell everybody. Tell our family. Tell our friends. Tell our neighbors that Jesus will set them free. They don't have to stay bound. Hmm. Amen. He will set them free. It's through the cross now. Christ has set people free from whatever peril uh, it, it, they're in, whether it's domestic, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whatever it is. He has freed them from the chains of sin and degradation. I'm telling you, this same Jesus, do you all hear me? This same Jesus of the Bible who said, peace be still in the midst of a storm is the same Jesus who gives us power to speak to the storm. Amen. Now, if you want to just live in the storm, that's fine. But if you want to speak to the storm, because he says, speak to the mountain. You see, some folks talk about the mountain. Some folks try to get familiar with the mountain, but he told us to speak to the mountain so it will be removed. So there are some things we need to talk to. <laughs> we got to stop talking about, but start talking to. There, you know there's a difference? Did you all know that there's a difference? You can talk about the problem, or you can speak to the problem. Amen. Amen. 
You don't want to hold a conversation with, <laughs> with your trouble. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. You want it to go. You want it to, you want it to hit the dough. <laughs> you and I, I don't know if anybody told you lately, but you and I have the answer. I say, you and I have the answer. We have the answer for people everywhere. A triumphant faith. A triumphant faith that is sustaining in Jesus Christ. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amen. You know, one of, one of our conditions is we may not be as grateful as we ought to be. And we, we probably need to be a little more thankful. Amen. 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 And grateful for what God has done. How many times we get up in the morning and we grumble? <laughs> we complain, we got to go to work. Some folks, there are people who wish they had a job to go to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, always, it said, who always leads us in triumph. You know, always is a strong word in the English language. You, you all know that. Uh, which means there's no shadow of doubt in this statement. Always is always. Always. We always have victory. And we got to start thinking like that. We always have victory. It doesn't mean trouble won't come to your door. But you don't have to open it. Amen. Always is strong. We always have victory. Not sometimes, but always. Now, you qualify. Because if you're walking in line with the pages... And, and the word that, that are found in the Bible, you will always triumph because God's promises never fail. Amen? Amen. There's a promise. There's a promise with your label. You need to tell your neighbors there's a promise with your label. Amen. Triumphant faith knows no limit. Knows no limits. So don't limit yourself in God. Because the Bible tells us with God, all things are possible. The requirement is that you believe. Amen? You can't believe beyond your knowledge. Amen. Uh, amen, church. Come on now. But you can go to the word and obtain all the knowledge and wisdom you need. Amen. It's found right there in the word of God. You just need to read it. Don't let it collect dust. Read it. <laughs> dust it off and read it. You can go to the Word and obtain all the knowledge you need to get through anything that you're facing. Now, you can learn from people who have already gone before you to avoid mistakes. Yeah, uh, I, I like to watch people because I don't like to make the same mistakes that others make. I don't know about you. I, I, I made up my mind. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like to, to uh, uh, how you say, I like to, I mean, if somebody needs to profit from people's mistakes, mm. amen, you don't want people to make a mistake, but if they make one, why should you make the same one? Yes, amen. amen. If you see 
a, a, a detour sign and you see someone just continuing to go and then the road get rough and bumpy and then uh, when they come back they say don't, don't go down that road then you ought to listen <laughs> you, you know some roads you get on it is a long it's a, you have to travel it a long long ways before you can detour I mean and get off some roads you got to stay on <laughs> <laughs> and some lanes you get in, you got to keep going. You got to you got to stay up. You got to stay with the pack because if you try to detour, you may get hit, hurt, damaged, maybe even killed. There are some lanes that are fast. So if you're used to just going slow and you get in a fast lane, you're in trouble. <laughs> there are some situations in life. Not one size fit all. Did y'all get that? I said there are some situations in life not one size fit all. There are some things you don't want to you 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 don't want to how you say hang around and 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 and, and deal with. So if you can avoid it, you avoid it. You avoid it. Faith always brings you victory in a crisis. Now, about faith that sustains. Um, I believe God has given me a clear word that will bless you today, that will release the miracle, wonder-working power of faith that will sustain you today. I want you to take a look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, where the word declares, and I, I would encourage you to read the, uh, that particular chapter, the first chapter, very, very powerful chapter. But the seventh verse has something unique and important for us to hear. And it reads as follows, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. Now let me just share with you what I'm hearing here and what I believe God is saying here that our faith in him, faith in him now, Faith in God is more precious than the things of the world. Now that may confound the world. It may take us a while to really comprehend and grasp that. God is saying to us, The consistent, active obedience of our faith. Because faith without works is what? Dead. Even in the worst of times, the greatest adversity that you could ever face Even your worst of times with God is better than your best time without him. Oh, come on, church. Come on now. <laughs> oh, my God. Amen. 
even in your most severe trial. God is saying that it will touch his heart and release his abundance. The trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire. It's going to be tested now. May be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. How many times have we had a trial And we were comforted when we sensed the presence of the Lord. Amen. Oh, it made a difference. Amen. How many midnight hours have we encountered when you didn't know what the next day was going to bring? But somehow the Holy Spirit brought back to your attention His mercies are new every morning. <laughs> oh my God and his promises are so sure his promises are so sure <laughs> and then Hebrews the 10th chapter verse 36 he says for you have need of endurance so, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Now let me read that again. I just feel somebody need to hear that, hear that again. For you have need of endurance. So that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. You do your part, God will certainly do his part. Can I get an amen? amen? That means that your faith is the determining factor or mechanism that activates, kicks into gear God's promises. And that's what you want. You want to get God's promises in gear in your life. Right. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's going to make you stronger, more determined, whatever storm you're in or whatever trial you're going through, that's going to make you more determined to stand on the promises because you know it works. You know it works. You don't doubt it. And as the song says, you can't make me doubt it. The elders used to say, I know too much about him. <laughs> you can't make me doubt it. <laughs> Oh my God, they used to rock, rock that church. You can't, you can't make me doubt him. Know too much about him. <laughs> oh my God. When our act of faith is a sacrifice, and sometimes that's exactly what it is. It's a sacrifice. But God sees that our faith is bigger than the challenge, bigger than the problem, bigger than the circumstances. Today, I think most of us would agree that we're living in, and we have dealt with some troubled times. Some uncertainty has, 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 has been there uh, when we look at uh, uh, how things have shut down and how things have been and then we look at uh, the social distancing how that has uh, created a, 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 an escalation of suicide and, and you know some folks you know, you know isolation may be good for some folks but 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 most of us need a little attention yeah, 
<laughs> Some of us can't afford to be alone too long. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I'm not making light of that, but, 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 but this isolation has, has driven some folks uh, to the brink uh, uh, of suicidal tendencies or thoughts, and some have succeeded. So there are a lot of things that we, we look at when we face and deal with the pandemic. People, frust the frustration and, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and then the media uh, promotion of, uh, 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 of, of, of certain things have caused a tremendous amount of fear in our society. And um, so it, it appears as though there's been, a, been a somewhat of a famine in our land. And then, uh, uh, then you think about the violence that has also taken place. It's, it's okay to protest. That's a part of our uh, First Amendment rights. But the violence, the violence, yeah. The unnecessary violence. We, we, we are witnessing somewhat of a famine in the land. So there's a need for an encouraging, saving word that will uplift and bring hope to people today. And I would like to believe that that's what we are about, where there's, there should be no shortage in the house of God in provision pertaining to the word. Amen. Regardless what's going on. Now, the classic biblical illustration of God's operating in a time of famine is found in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. But God uses an illustration of a woman whose offering and sacrifice to the prophet Elijah was rewarded by a double, double miracle. And I just want to share a few things here because there's a lesson that we can glean and, and learn from this. Um, and I believe it will help us. In 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verse 2 to 6, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook, share it, share it, that is before Jordan. And it shall be, that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. You know, we, we say here, be it unto me according to thy word. For he went and, and, and dwelt by the brook, share it. That is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and fresh and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook. Now, uh, now, those of us who have any knowledge of birds know that a raven is a dirty bird. <laughs> <laughs> nothing clean about a raven. But sometimes God will use some unorthodox methods to bless us. And you can't afford to turn down any blessing that the Lord sends to you. 
Amen. Amen. Regardless how he sent it or who he sent it by. Yeah. See, there, there, there are people who don't want to be blessed by certain people, yeah. certain ministries, certain denominations. But wherever your blessing, wherever your blessing is coming from, if God is sending it, it's okay to receive it. Amen. That's all you need to know. Amen. Even if it's a, a dirty bird. <laughs> And, 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 you know, and, you know, and we talk about dirty birds, but there's not much. I, I grew up around chickens, and, and, you know, chickens, the most blessed bird. <laughs> but a chicken is a dirty bird. <laughs> and we love chicken. <laughs> Now, I want you to notice something here. And here's, here's a lesson here. This begin, begins with, God's, with God instructing Elijah. Elijah, as we know, he's a faithful servant. Instructing him on how he will provide for him during a time of famine. In other words how he will sustain him. Now, now sometimes we want to argue with God about how we want our blessing and how we want God to take care. Sometimes we want to tell God how to bless us when God knows what's best. Father knows what's best. So when the brook dried up, See, sometimes we get too comfortable. And when the brook dries up, when our source dries up, we want to hold on. But when it dries up, that's time for you to move on. Sometimes friendship dries up. Sometimes relationship dries up. But when it dries up, that's time. Don't keep banging and beating yourself up or banging on the door trying to get in when the door has been closed. Unless the Lord is in it. Amen? But notice, instruction came. God instructed Elijah when the brook dried up to go to the town of Zarephath where he made provision for him, verse 9 through 12. And now notice, this is what it says, stated, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose. When the Lord tells you, gives you instruction, that's time for you to go. Don't try to go and make it happen. Fake it till, it, till you make it. No, you're just going to be frustrated. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, 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 I want to ask you, how beholding are you? What are you looking at? What are you looking at that's sustaining you or not sustaining you? Amen. Behold, the widow woman was there gathering, there gathering of sticks and he called to her and said fetch me I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me I, I pray thee Oh, in, in modern translation, oh, why are you doing, why are you, hey, hey, yeah, I, I want you to hook me up. <laughs> uh, uh, with a little marshal of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little all in a cruise 
Come on, say, it's enough. It's enough. What, what you have in your hand, if, if, you, if you follow God's instruction, it's enough. It's enough. You just got to know, you just got to know what to do with it. Sometimes all it is is a seed to meet a need. But if you eat your seed, you're going to miss your need. Behold, here's another behold. I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She has already determined the outcome. And Elijah said unto her, God will send you in some places where people have given up, and that's the time for you to speak up. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now, in essence, what he's saying now is I got a word from God that if you follow instruction here you're going to have enough to take care of you and yours. One of the mistakes that we have is that we try to many times we miss it because taking care of God's house will take care of your house. Do you all hear what I'm saying? I got that a long time ago. If you, if, you, if you make provision for God's house, God will make provision for your house. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Oh, no. She, no this, woman, this woman could see. She was thinking. It, this, was, this was the natural way of thinking. But God had brought the supernatural to, to bear. And when, when God brings the supernatural to bear, don't you miss your moment. When God tells you to release something in your hand, he's got more in store. When you release your little, <laughs> oh my God. And although the woman, see, see, let me just say this, what you do first determines the rest. When you put God first. And this, one, this required faith now. This required faith. This woman had to have faith that God would do what he said through the man of God. And one of the problems we have today is we don't trust our prophets. We don't trust people that God is using. And all this woman and her son were near starvation near death she obeyed and put God's prophet before herself and the things and it's not about who God uses amen that's not about it it's whoever God is using you trust the God you look beyond the man or the woman and you trust the God that you see amen And her obedience was rewarded. And guess what? Faith sustained her. Even in the midst of a, of a famine. See, God can take care of you even in the midst of a trial, a pandemic. Hmm? Shut down the economy and all. God can take care of you. Do you not know that there are people who are really prospering and being blessed here, trying to do what God has, has, has required of them, trusting God? In fact, some of them have to hold some of their testimony because they don't know how people would receive it. God is faithful. If God told you he's going to take care of you, you can rest on it. You can rest in it. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And, 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 and she and he and her house did eat 
many days. Many days. Amen. Amen. The widow of Zarephath is an example how faith and obedience move God to release his miraculous provision through harsh, difficult economic times. And do you think God is any different today Amen. than he was then? He's the same. The Bible tells us he's the same. God can take care of you and your family. God can take care of you and yours. And then sometimes it really doesn't matter how stubborn or how hard-headed they are. God can still watch you heal hands and hear your prayer in spite of them. And it's not about whether they deserve it. It's just who you're trusting in. Where you put your trust. The widow woman's faith and obedience were the key to unlocking God's provision and resurrection power. Let me, let me just share with you this here. I was kind of got a little ahead of myself. This same woman was the only first miracle released through, his, through her faithful obedience and sacrifice. In, in, in verse 17, we read miracle number two. Her son fell sick and died. And of course, the woman was destroyed. The woman turned to, to, to the man of God again. In her sorrow, she turned to him. And Elijah uh, 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 went to praying and, and, and praying and crying out to God to resurrect the son of, of this, this little woman who had obeyed the Lord's command to offer up all that she had. In verse 22 it says, the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. I'm telling you, God can sustain you and yours. And the soul of the child came, came into him again, and he was revived. This woman, faith and obedience were the key because she had made room. She had made room for the man of God. I would say making room for the people of God. When you're doing for God, nothing is in vain. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you're doing for God, nothing is in vain. And, and, uh, and I know people are experiencing some, some difficult, troubled times. And perhaps you, like this woman, need a miracle. Your, in your faith, uh, your faith uh, or, or, or your body may need healing. Well, he's a healer. I say he's a healer. But as you hear the voice of the Lord and as you sow out of your, your need, God makes a way. Do you hear me? When you sow to the work of God's kingdom, I just want you to know what you're doing is not in vain. You being here today is not in vain. You, your sowing is not in vain. It's moving the heart of God. There's a reward. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you right now to release your faith in the gift of Sustainment as God speaks to you. Help is on the way. Oh, church, I say help is on the way. I say help is on the way. So you may be weary, you may be troubled, but help is on the way. And this help 
was saved today. Are you listening? Is she listening? Now, I, I want to share in closing in this part, and then we'll go right into our communion. Paul, the uh, Apostle Paul, was another who was familiar, very, very familiar with um, uh, persecution, heartaches, trouble. So he understood how others may have felt when they experienced similar circumstances. And uh, But he kept his, his trust in God and he didn't give in to his fear. He, he, he didn't allow the storms of life to overwhelm him. And when you, when you refuse to allow your circumstances to overshadow uh, the promises of God and, and you don't doubt God and you don't allow your emotions to run wild you can trust God any day anywhere whatever comes or goes you can trust God all you need to know is that any storm that you're facing you can face it with God I say you can face it with God don't you give up, don't give in, and don't quit. Don't quit. We have the power of God's word. We have the power of God's word, and we can respond to a trial as we open the Bible, uh, find a word of encouragement, find something that God said to change uh, our situation. The storms will come. I said the storms will come, but you can speak to the storm. We will face mountains, we will face obstacles, but we have a word that's within us, deposited within us, that will sustain us when the trials of life are all around us. Amen? Amen. Now, you, you have the opportunity to, to stand on God's overcoming uh, promises, uh, uh, his um, uh, precious word, or you can give in and yield to your disappointments. You have a choice. I choose to, to stand on God's promises and agree that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's, that's my, my thing. That's my thing. And I just want to read what it says in the, uh, was First Peter, uh, the sixth and seventh verse, what it states in the um, uh, Message Bible. First Peter chapter one, verse six through seven. I know how great this makes you feel. Even though you have put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime, Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it. Proved, pure, genuine faith put you through this suffering comes out proved, genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. I'm telling you, God has chosen you to put you on display. Amen. Do you hear me? I said, God has chosen you to put you on display, to prove his goodness. And he's faithful all the time. You can trust him. Whatever you're dealing with, I say you can trust him. Just say with me, be it unto me, Lord, According to thy word, Father, today I choose to believe all your promises found in your word, and I confess them 
I confess that with you all things are possible. Lord, I'm a believer. I believe that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Listen, beloved, if you prayed that prayer and you believe it, rest assured, rest assured, God heard. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, as it pertains to communion, uh, in remembrance, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And we know this phrase, we've heard it. We know it from observing the communion that we, we have taken and, and others have taken in their churches. Remember those words also being engraved on furniture, the communion table. Amen. But we don't want that to become too familiar that we take it for granted. Emmanuel, when we remember that God in the flesh, Jesus' blood has been shed for the remission of many. Jesus is asking us through this communion to partake of him. His life is made up of love. So we are to remember his love for us. We are to remember the finished work. We are to remember that we are living from God. Do you hear me? We are living from God. God's forgiveness is flowing out of us. Flowing out of me. Flowing out of you. Amen. There are things in life, people in life, circumstances, situations in life that are, are challenging and difficult and we have faced them and it, we, some of us have been wounded as a result. But we have to forgive ourselves and we have to forgive others who put us in those predicaments. It's there. You forgive them through the grace of God as he has forgiven you. Amen? Amen? And you don't, start, you don't continue to beat yourself up. If, if the devil has a stick, you make sure you didn't give it to him. Amen? Because if you do, he's sure going to beat you with it. <laughs> You're living from God. You're living from God's forgiveness. It's flowing out of you. And what is Jesus doing the night before he was betrayed? He was giving thanks. He was giving thanks. You know, we started out with that, and we're going to props in with that. He was giving thanks. He was giving thanks. He was about to be betrayed, but he was still giving thanks. See, some of us have been betrayed by friends. Sometimes our health has betrayed us. Sometimes our friends have betrayed us. Sometimes we thought things were going well, and we were betrayed. Disillusioned, disappointed. Give thanks. Not about what you're going through, but who you're going through with. Amen? You know that little saying, Psalm 23, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. God is with you. Amen? God is with you. God is with you. Now, I want to say this because when I was a, a little boy, I used to play with funny money. But sometimes when you grow up and your money looks funny because it's not enough. <laughs> and I've been there too. And when your money looks funny and, and it has betrayed you because uh, your, 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 your situation requires much more but your, but your finances say no I don't, you, you're not enough but you got to take what little that you have and trust God listen 
When your money betrays you, and, and it's funny, or even your health betrays you, and it's funny, you got to remind yourself and remember what God has already done for you in the past. You got to remember that the finished work is still uh, applicable. It's, you can apply it. The finished work of Christ. We are to remember. We are to, in other words, we are to keep our focus. We are to keep our focus. Keep our focus on the cross. Remember what he did on the cross for you. And, and if he went to the cross for you, what you're going through now, he does not want it to crucify you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He still loves you and he's still watching over you and he has a desire to, to protect you. You see, and, you know, and I know I want to close, but I, want, but I probably, probably need to say this here. Some of us, we focus so much on the pandemic and, and the coronavirus, we've forgotten about how good God is and how faithful he is. That he's a protector. He took care of the children of Israel. That first Passover. And you know what it said? Not when they left Egypt, there was not one feeble one of them. Why? Because the blood of the lamb had been applied. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. For me and you. The blood of Jesus has been applied. That seals it. We don't apply. That was a day. It was yesterday. That people used to plead the blood. They used to plead the blood. You know, I didn't know what they were talking about. I thought they were a little off. But as I've grown up, I've discovered that you can plead the blood of Jesus over your home, over your job, over your finances. Some of you, stop looking at your money funny and start pleading the blood of Jesus over it. Stop looking at your situation. Start pleading the blood of Jesus over your body, over your health, over your children. Our children, are, we don't know whether they're going to be in the schoolhouse or whether they're going to be at home. Wherever they are, they need the blood of Jesus applied over them. Our grandchildren, they need the blood of Jesus applied over them. The blood of Jesus, they're secure as we apply the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you, if I, listen, if I didn't know about the blood of Jesus, because I'm at the state, stage right now, I want more grandchildren. I want to kiss some more feet. But if I didn't know about the blood of Jesus, hello, I would say, who want to bring children in this mess? But I know about the blood, and I'm telling you, you got the answer to what the world needs. You're secure in Christ. And let me tell you this. Just like I've said about a new car. You trying to protect it by taking two parking spaces. If God can't take care of you. You might as well go on out there and get you, take your hide out there. And, and, and let whatever come, come. But if you know that God can take care of you and yours. You don't worry about it. You just trust God. If he took care of you yesterday. Don't tell me he can't take care of you today. And you trust him. And you apply the blood. You use what you know. That's how you go. Do you know there's a miracle in your mouth? And you can activate God's peace into your life because he's the king of peace the world needs to see a triumphant church not hiding behind four walls of the church the, the physical uh, uh, 
building, but a true church, triumphant church, trusting God. Come what may, I trust God. Be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Come what may, I trust God. You got to trust God today. You got to trust, and you got to believe that he'll take care of you. Amen. 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 And you got to believe that no suffocating virus like what happened in Egypt will happen to you because the blood of Jesus has been applied to the doorpost of your soul. Amen. 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 Do you hear me? And if you don't know what it is, you ask God what it is that's trying to destroy you. And once you identify it, you go before the Lord and you plead the blood of Jesus. And you keep on walking, you keep on talking, you keep on praising God, and you're giving thanks. Listen, you worried about tomorrow. Have you thanked him for today? I say, you worried about tomorrow. Have you thanked him for today? Did you thank him when you got up this morning? You worried about whether you're going to get up tomorrow? Have you thanked him for getting up today? In this sanctuary, there are plugs. There are plugs. And I, and I want to share this final bit about communion. There are plugs where you can plug in a cup. You can, you can stick a card or a plug on the end of it and plug in and be plugged into power. And be plugged into power and secure power for a lamp, for a light, a, a fixture. Well, I want you to know, when you take communion, you can plug into power. That can change your situation. I say you can plug into to God's power. Now, the power was there all the time, but you got to plug into it. And faith that sustains you will help you to plug in to the power source. The source was there all the time. You just got to connect with it. As long as you're disconnected in unbelief, doubt, fear, you'll miss it. And you can expect to receive God's vision and purpose for your life as you stay plugged in to the power source. A word from God to receive answers from heaven to show up in your life. God wants to show up in your life to show you off to the world. Amen. You're the example. You're the the Bible that someone need to read. You're the Bible that someone needs to hear. Come on, I'm tapping into the power of peace, the power of protection, and the power of favor. And you can too. Everything Jesus died for pertaining to the finished work, you can partake of. Are you ready? Are you ready? On that night, the night of our Lord's betrayal, he took bread and he broke it and he said, take eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come anew. Let us prepare our hearts for the communion. Let us receive and I hope you, I, I spoke a little bit so that those of you, uh, the virtual conjugants, could get your bread and, and your, your, your wine or grape juice uh, ready and partake and have communion with us. This is his body. His body that was broken so ours could be whole. 
I like to think of it as someone being fragmented and we need mending. We need to be whole. Let's receive whole in our thoughts, whole in our body, in our body. Let's receive all of it. And then I want to, some of us, we got what we're dealing with in our society today, and you can't help but be affected by it to some extent as, as you have compassion for others. Complicated grief. Grief that confuses you. You don't, you, 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 you're okay one day, you not the, the next. You see things that trouble you and bothers you to the core and makes you feel like you're trapped. Some have lost loved ones and you, you've, you weren't even able to attend the funeral outside of a virtual uh, 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 display on, on but you physical physically your physicality was not there but uh, as they say you were there in spirit a and you're still hurting now he carried your sorrows and bore your grief why don't you apply the blood Let's receive ye all of it and say, Lord, this is too much for me. Take this off of me and handle it. I'm casting it. He said, cast your cares. That's a care. Cast it on him. Let's receive ye the wine, the cup. We are applying the blood to our grief-stricken situation. And we're coming out of the fog of grief. Amen? Amen? Other words, you're going forward. You're going forward. You're not going to be stalled. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. You know, we never, we never close without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. And if you take what has been said and God loves you so much, he sent Jesus Christ to die for you. Take him at his word and confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and then thank him from, for coming into your heart and forgiving you and, and the Holy Spirit abiding and living in you as, he, as God promised. And make him Lord of your life. Say, so Lord, I receive all that the preacher said. I, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me of my sin, healing my wretched soul. Lord, I need you. I need you as Lord of my life, and I make you Lord of my life by way of invitation. I'm not ashamed. I won't tell someone. I will not be a closet Christian. I'll not keep it secret. I'm going to tell the world that I made Jesus my Lord and my Savior. Now unto him that's always able to do exceeding Abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Always according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Throughout all ages, world without end. May the Lord bless you. Watch over you. Guard you and keep you and yours. 
the Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you. Be so gracious, kind, and merciful, giving you favor, favor needed. The Lord lift up his approving continent upon you and give you reigning, sustaining peace, tranquility of heart, and life continually. May you now go in peace and the peace of God go with you and let the church say, Amen. We love you. Go in peace.